بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه وبعد عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رجلا قال يا رسول الله أوصني قال لا تغضب فردد مرارا قال لا تغضب يعني رد قال أوصني قال لا تغضب قال أوصني قال لا تغضب Abu Hurairah narrated, a man uh, said, O Messenger of Allah, advise me. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not get angry. The man repeated that several times and he replied to him every time and each time, do not get angry. So the man kept asking, Ya Rasulullah, advise me. Then the Prophet would say, don't get angry, don't get angry. Ya Rasulullah, advise me, don't get angry, and so forth. Al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala reported this uh, hadith in his book Al-Adab, uh, Mannerism, in a chapter warning from, um, uh, warning from anger, warning from anger, Al-Hadar min Al-Ghadab. Anger is just one letter away from danger. So, Warning from anger. That's what Al Bukhari rahimahullah was warning people from when it comes to manners. I do see a, a connection between this hadith and the previous ahadith. If you remember, the previous hadith we talked about is about what? Hitting the face and cursing somebody's face. That's right. What caused people to hit? What caused people to be physically abu abuse other physically or verbally? It's because of anger mostly. Also related to the issue of rulers, because the rulers' anger is severe. And in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here, this advice came in perfect time because he was talking about the issue related to rulers and how uh, uh, rulers must be good to their people, kind to their people, merciful to their people. And one thing also for uh, them not to be angry at people because the anger of rulers can result in a massive casualties and a very abuse, abuse of power. Um, anyway, um, also people with power in generally can get angry faster. Those who are in power have, uh, they don't care about the, uh, the consequences of their actions. They can get angry easily. They can get angry faster uh, than others because they don't care. So. Uh, it's dangerous for such people to be angry because they can make very damaging decisions or actions. Uh, this hadith, he said, Awsini, Ya Rasulullah, give me an advice. Give me an advice. And this, Nabi, he didn't say, give me an advice in relation to my akhirah, for example, or in relation to my uh, understanding of Islam, or in relation to my salah. It was a very general, uh, you know, question. Any advice, advice it means something that will advance me, something that will benefit me in reg regarding to the worldly life or the hereafters, religious or worldly matter. So when you seek advice, you seek about both. And guess what? In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi gave him an advice that basically perfect for both. Perfect for both. He said, لا تغضب, don't get angry. Uh, Question, uh, Abdullah, what that means, don't get angry? Huh? <laughs> I like the picture. Huh? Don't act on your anger. What else? What do you understand from don't get angry? Don't let anger control you. But he said, don't get angry. So it's not about, you, know, you guys talk about, okay, I'm angry, but I'm going to control it. He's saying, don't get angry. Yes, salam. Very excellent. He said that, Stay away from the things that will lead to anger. See what are the things that cause anger and don't do it. Stay away from it. Also, what you guys said, 
أصل العلماء رحمة الله صلى الله don't get angry it means don't get angry to the level where you can control yourself don't get angry to the level where this is will lead you to abuse and also العلماء رحمة الله mentioned something very interesting they said don't put yourself in a position don't um, try from the beginning to avoid anger so you don't reach to the point where you become angry okay uh, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam kept repeating this don't get angry don't get angry uh, every time the person asked him the, for advice which it shows you since the Prophet repeated it several times it shows you that it is important it is very important طيب What do we learn from this hadith? Number one, in this hadith shows you it is important to ask advice from someone that you think of uh, as a scholar or a person of wisdom. You know, you should seek people's advice. You should seek people counseling, okay? You should seek people counseling. And you should ask people to Uh, or seek people's counseling and advices. Two, uh, one of the things that, one of the things, you can go talk to her. <laughs> I feel bad for her. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, he <laughs> keep like pointing and I, I was like, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess he's trying to make you understand the hadith don't get angry <laughs> okay like, so also the hadith shows you that you should not do the things that makes you angry don't put yourself in a situation where you know you will get angry so for example if you know that you will get angry if you get in conversation early in the morning because you're not a morning person avoid the conversation If you know that when you are tired, you can control yourself. So in this case, you know what? Avoid uh, any kind of arguing or confrontation with someone uh, while you are tired. You know what? Maybe in certain, when you're hungry, when you are, when you just comes from the house, you just, you, uh, you, or maybe something bad happened to you that irritated you. You know what? I might, it's a good idea to avoid any kind of confrontation with people or uh, things that will cause me to lose my control over myself or get me angry. Um, certain places, certain people make you angry. You try to avoid those people or these places or this kind of news, you know. Uh, for instance, you notice yourself. Every time you listen to the news, you get angry. You know, خلاص, you know what, this news station, I'm not going to listen to it anymore. Recently, this is true story. Recently, I was uh, uh, part of, uh, uh, you know, uh, a board or a group of people, and they made me so angry. You know, I, I found not you know, not so, but I, they made me angry. The way they talk, the way they, you know, they handle uh, matters. It's a board, so. It really was very irritating for me. Every meeting, every time we sat, it just made me very irritated by the way they handle things. So you know what? I resigned. Alhamdulillah, I don't need this stress in my life anymore. And I resigned because I tried to apply this hadith. Don't put yourself in the thing that will cause you to be angry. You know what? It's not worth it. Let's say you are a person gets so angry from someone on social media. Just, you know what? Uh, uh, don't follow that person anymore. Don't read their uh, Facebook posts. Don't listen to their lectures. Don't listen, read their tweets and so forth. Uh, and, and avoid the thing that makes you angry. Um, you know, Speaking of the reasons, you know what they say. A hungry man is an angry man, you know. 
So if this is what makes you anxious, just don't be hungry. Um, also, this hadith tells you that you should try to control your anger. And because sometimes anger is something I can't control. You know, when it comes, it comes. It's just a, it's an it's inner strong feeling, tense feeling. You know, so when it comes, you remember this hadith. So what you do, you try to control the outcome of the anger. So don't let the anger control you. You try to control it. Don't ever follow actions and decisions uh, uh, after you become angry. When you're angry, don't make any decision. When you're angry, don't make any, you know, commitment. You know, don't stop until you come down. Especially major things. Every time people come to me, I divorce my wife. Why? I was so angry. Tayyip Khalaf, you angry, shut your mouth. You know what? I was so angry at him. I told him, divorce me. And he divorced me. Yeah, you asked for it. Okay. Uh, I mean, you. what do you want? No, I don't mean it. I don't want him to do that. Yes, but he's angry. And, and this whole thing is, you know, uh, you have to be careful. You have to be very careful how you deal with, with this. Um, so don't make decision, major decision after you're angry. There is a study shows 99% of crimes and problems that happen uh, between people happen in the first 20 seconds after you become angry. 99% of crimes and problems and civil dispute and stuff like that happen in the first 20 seconds after the person gets so angry. So if this is what it should so be careful, control that first 20 seconds or you know minute when you become so angry, you know, right after that, don't make any decision. طيب. Maimoun ibn Mahran said, uh, Salman al-Farisi, a man came to him and he said, Ya Aba Abdullah, advise me. He said, don't be angry. He said, you ask me not to be angry, but I don't control anger. Sometimes I don't control myself. When I became angry, it just take over me. You know, uh, 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 it overcome me. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I can't control myself. Like the anger comes. I don't know how not to be angry. Then he said, if you become angry, if you can't control the feeling, control your tongue and your hands. And this is a beautiful advice. So if that's the case, just control your hands and control your tongue. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz wrote to one of his governors. He said, don't ever punish someone while you're angry at that person. If somebody made you angry because of a crime that he committed, lock him up until you come down, then punish the person. Then punish him according to this, to his sin. I understand anger is part of our nature as a human being. شوف الله قال عن بني آدم إيش قال إنه كان ظلوما جهولا. Human beings have ignorance and transgression in them. We are very capable of that. That's why the Sharia, the Islam, came to help us to control ourselves to control our desires and not and to control these tense feelings not to be controlled by them so also understand that people in the anger are levels levels some people who are so angry like he can angry, he can turn from 1 to 100 in less than a second or in a second. He just turned so angry. Some people know it takes a while until the person gets angry. But some people, when they get angry, 
it, it became so tense and so strong. Some people, their anger is short period of time, but strong. Some people know it is long period of time, but it's mild. So people have very different ways. And uh, 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 anger uh, uh, in general is the, the mother of so many sins, subhanAllah. Anger is, is, is really true. It's one letter away from danger. Uh, it's a mother of so many sins and, and problems. You know, anger, what led people to kill, what led people to invade, country invade one another and war between, you know, nations. It, it started with a moment of anger. You know, anger is the, caused so many homes to be uh, destroyed or broken. Anger, what let relatives don't talk to one another. Anger, what let, you know, uh, uh, um, people to hit and to abuse. Anger, it what led people to uh, uh, bad mouth and use bad words and curse. It's anger, you know. Uh, uh, anger is what made people uh, abuse their power as well. So anger is, is very dangerous. That's why Nabi Sallallahu warn us from anger. And as I said, people have a different level of anger. And I'll be very honest with you that anger is something that I was debating if I should talk about it or not tonight. Because I myself have a lot of struggle sometimes with anger. And I can say that and admit it. It's something of, of the area that I have a very, even some people might not expect me to get angry or anger per angry person. But it's a, something that is a big, big struggle for me. And, and I don't angry over many things or there are certain things that can irritate me very quickly. And especially under, under stress. And I don't want to be a hypocritical, like talking about something that I myself has a lot of struggle with. Uh, but one thing I try my best, and to a certain extent, I'm good at it, that I don't abuse, and I don't think I ever abuse, alhamdulillah, when I'm angry. And it's abuse, I mean, since I never hit, I don't hit, I don't, you know, uh, make like bad decisions or long term, I, I don't, I, I can control that. But still, I would like to see myself more calm and, and have no anger. That's, that's a big struggle. I'm saying this because not as easy as a lot of people do. People have a very different personalities. There is people, mashallah, ya'ani, barid, cold, like ice. You know, and they can talk and they come. That's, that's a blessing. If you have it, don't lose it. If you have it, don't ever let it go. That's a blessing to be able to calm not to, to, be, to have a strong reaction. I do believe in what the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ إِلَّا وَلَهُ دَوَاءَ There is no disease unless there is a cure for it. And one of the diseases is this, is the anger, it's a disease, it needs help. Uh, uh, and it's, as I said, it's a very different level. Um, so how anger make you blind, can't see. When I was in college, we used to have a, a person who used to um, study in our university, but he doesn't attend the regular classes. He comes in the end of the year just to take the exams. We, we call them يعني, uh, or like they are not, they don't attend regularly. He died, rahimahullah ta'ala. He was killed by his cousin. What's the story? Just wallahi ibra azima. It's a great lesson to see how anger can blind a person. His cousin had a civil case in the court, child support, stuff like that. And the judge needed something called kafir, yani someone to uh, uh, write, like bond this person and sponsor that person, said to the judge, I'll bring him in the, because a couple of times he didn't show up for the court appointment. So he come and he said, 
I guarantee that this person will come. You know, I'm responsible to bring him on the next session. Just don't lock him up. Let him go free, and when the court time, I'll bring him. But guess what? He didn't really appreciate his cousin, which is our friend who studied with us in university, Khalid Sharia. Um, several times didn't show up. And obviously, the judge said, if you don't bring him, you go to jail. You will be in trouble. So he got sick of it, so he talked to his cousin, get him in the car, okay, and drive with him. Then all of a sudden, he goes into the police station. And he wa the police station has a gate. He goes inside the police station, stop in front of the police station. Then he said, cousin, what are you doing? He said, I want you to come with me inside, and we cancel the... There is a paper format form that you sign in, in the police station. It's halas. I'm not responsible for him. He is here. Because you, you put me in trouble too, so many times. His cousin is a very angry person, abused his wife and stuff like that. Anyway, then he said, you betrayed me. And he became so angry. Guess what? I just want you to imagine how anger blind the person. Now imagine the car in front of the, inside the police station, right at the gate of the office, and all the officers and the cars, and like hundreds of them all over the place, okay? And he got so angry, he pulled the gun and he shot his cousin six, seven times, and he killed him instantly. And the whole case is what? It's a civil case, not even a, a case that you go to jail for it. It's all over like payments. And he killed him. And his cousin was executed. I don't remember now if I attended his execution or not, but I remember the day when they said, you know, this is his execution today. Anger, crazy. Shaitan, that's his best moment. Blind you completely, you don't see. Anyway, um, one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anger from the shaitan, so that's one of the advice, is to say what, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإما ينزغنك من الشيطان نزغ فاستعذ بالله Ask refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seek refuge in Allah from the shaitan. Say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that I know a word, if this person would say it, his anger will go away. Just say, أَعُوذُ اللَّهِ شَرَجِيمٌ طيب. Also, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, change your position. If you're standing, sit down. If you sit down, lay down. You know, if you're laying down, stand there. And just change your position. Okay? Just walk. Go and walk. Also, one of the things that helps, don't argue. Okay? And until you come down. The worst thing to do is to argue while you are angry. If you are angry, don't talk about it right now. And please, if you are the other person, let's say you are the son, you're the father, you're the husband, the wife, whatever you, you are, please help. Because at that time, I don't see that. I don't remember that. I can't think of that. So I need the person to say, okay, no problem. Let's talk about it when you come down. No, 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 I want to talk about it right now. No problem. We talk about it right now. Just, you know what? Whatever, inshallah, will be good. No problem. Just diffuse it. Once you are calm, express your anger. Don't express your anger, what caused your anger, while you're angry. When you come down, tell them what was bothering you. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا غضب أحدكم في مسلم أحمد فليسكت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم said when you're angry, remain silent. Don't talk because you're going to regret it. يقول مرق العجلي ما امتلأت غضبا قط ولا تكلمت في غضب قط بما أندم عليه إلا بما أندم عليه إذا رضيت Every time I open my mouth when I'm angry I regret what I said Another tip النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم said في حديث الإمام أحمد رحمه الله وسنة أبي داود Advise us to make wudu في حديث عطيه السعدي رضي الله عنه He said صلى الله عليه وسلم perform wudu It will calm you down he said, Al-Ghadab is like a charcoal, like a fire inside your heart, and the water will take it away. Just make wudu. Number five, sometimes when you're angry and you, 
You know, the, I, I, I try this a lot with myself. I, I, I'm angry and sometimes I say to myself, my brain telling me, you have every right what to be angry. You, this is not right. And you have every right to be angry. And I said to myself, I, I, I try. And I says, yes, I have every right to be angry, but I'm going to let it go because of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala re- reward those who will let their anger go away, will control their anger. وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ الْغَيْظِ الشيء اللي يغيظك الغيظ the, the thing that makes you so angry الغيظ the thing that you feel it is absolutely not correct things to irritate you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ يَعْنِي they suppress their anger يَكْظِمُ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ Those who forgive وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And Allah loves المحسنين Those who are good Some ulama said وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ مَنْ هُمُ الْمُحْسِنُونَ هُمُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضَ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ هَا وَلَا هُمُ الْمُحْسِنُونَ so the verse, those who spend their wealth in the time of uh, hardship, the time of ease, those who control their anger, those who forgive people. And Allah loves al-muhsineen, the one who do things perfectly, those sincere, those who are kind to others, you know, those who are perfect their worship. That's all the meaning of muhsineen. Some ulama said that what the verse interpreted. Others said no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning here several quality. One, no, the other opinion is, so Al-Muhsinin became another quality. The other opinion suggesting, no, no. Al-Muhsinin, who are Al-Muhsin, are the one I just described for you, which is al- the one who spend in the hardship and ease, the one who control their anger, and the one who forgive people. Those are Al-Muhsinin. So two ways to understand the verse, and I don't think there is any... Yani, uh, Contradiction because part of perfecting your iman and ibadah is to have these qualities. طيب قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاثة من كن فيه أواه الله في كنفه وستر عليه برحمته وأدخله في محبته. Three things if you have them, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will cover you, يعني will not expose you, and He will cover you with His mercy. And you will be in his protection. And you will be loved by him. You see, Rasulullah, what are these three? قَالَ مَنْ إِذَا أُعْطِيَ شَكَرْ The one who when he's been giving, he's grateful. وَإِذَا قَدَرَ غَفَرْ And when he is capable of punishment, of punishment, he forgives. وَإِذَا غَضَبَ فَتَرْ And the person, when he becomes or she becomes angry, they calm themselves down. Three great qualities. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تغضب لك الجنة in the hadith. Don't be angry and the jannah is your reward. And Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم said the one who controls his anger will be called in front of all people on the day of judgment. ينادى على رؤوس الخلائق. Allah will call him and honor him in front of all the people in Sunan Abi Dawud. من حديث أنس رضي الله عنه. Why? Because it's not easy. You know, I, I do believe that those who say, oh, control so easy, is not easy. It's a hard thing to do. And it needs practice. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا سلام Listen to this hadith where Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As said, Ya Rasulullah, ما يمنعني من غضب الله What is the thing that will protect me from Allah's anger? قَالَ لَا تَغْضَبْ Don't be angry yourself. Abu Mas'ud, one of the companions, he got so angry and he was beating a slave of his. Okay? And I had the whip up, I'm going to hit him. Then all of a sudden I saw somebody came from behind me 
and stopped me and said something. I, I was so angry, I didn't recognize the voice first. Then this person approached me closer and I looked. فَإِذَا هُوَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. Is Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. And I saw him, I dropped the whip. I dropped the stick. And the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم told him, اعلم أبا مسعود. You should know Aba Mas'ud. أن الله أقدر عليك منك على هذا الغلام. You should know that Allah has more power and he is, يعني, uh, uh, can do to you way more than what you are doing to this slave of yours. He said, Ya Rasulullah, لا أضرب مملوكا بعدها أبدا. Ya Rasulullah, I would never hit any servant of mine in a game. قال أبو الدرداء أقرب ما يكون العبد من غضب الله إذا غضب واحذر أن تظلم من لا ناصر له إلا الله يا سلام يا سلام أبو الدرداء هذا حكيم الصحابة أحد يسمونه حكيم الشام one of the wisest companions the wisest man of الشام رضي الله عنه ذا he said you will be so close to Allah's anger or Allah angry at you when you are angry because you're about to commit something when you're so angry like that you might commit and say something that it can you know, ruin your deen even then he said something very powerful he said be careful to abuse someone has no one to support him except Allah don't abuse someone who this person have no supporter except Allah. Yani he doesn't have power, he doesn't have, uh, you know, status. The only one that this person can turn to seeking help from is Allah. I see that sometimes when I see some sisters abused at home. They have no family members, they have no parents, nobody can stand for them. I see that sometimes kids. I see that time with people who have no money to hire lawyers or to get, you know, their cases. They have no high profile. An employee. I see this times, you know, with some individual who just because they're not famous, they don't have celebrity status. So people step on them. Don't ever abuse someone that this be very careful. Because that person has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the benefits of, of leaving anger or something to think about it also. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من كظم جرعة غيظ ملأ الله جوفه إيمانا If you avoid anger, control it, Allah fill your heart with iman. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم also من, من, uh, uh, ما من جرعة أعظم أجرا عند الله من جرعة غيظ كظمها عبد ابتغاء وجه الله. One of the most rewarded thing is to control your anger, your anger. طيب. Another. So we said, make wudu, change your position, be sick, don't talk, don't get engaged in argument. Say عذر لاش ترجيم. Uh, we said also that think about what the virtue of controlling anger. Six, make dhikr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Serenity and, come, and calmness come to the heart that it is filled with dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيتُ فِي سُورَةِ الْكَهْفِ Allah said, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيتُ النسيان في لغة العرب يكون بمعنى الغضب فلذلك فسر بعض السلف قال واذكر ربك إذا غضبت You mention Allah سبحانه وتعالى إذا نسيت نسيت means forget but many actually interpreted this because in النسيان one of the meaning of نسيت in Arabic language could means you get angry طيب uh, There are you know, there's no benefit really from anger except 
relieving your frustration. It will not solve the problem. And that's, that's what killing the person. Sometimes that's what kills me. Like, I know that my anger will not solve the problem. It's just, just anger. It's not, and you get angry. Let's say, alhamdulillah, I don't do that. But let's say you get angry and you slam or hit or you, 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 someone because of that. Do you think that's going to fix it? It's not. You think your screaming and your cursing will fix it? Oh, no. And I know you know that, but it just, it's just a matter of, that's what hurts the most. So the, moment you, the more you talk about it, and you ask Allah SWT help, hopefully you can get over it. There are two types of pains. The one that hurts you, and others uh, that change you. So there is two types of pains. The one that hurts you, and other that change you. That's right. There is two pain. A pain that hurts you, that's it. And there is a pain that change you. The pain of being overweight helped you to lose weight. You feel the pain, you go through this, so you know what? I'm going to commit. The pain of being lazy, blah, blah, the pain of losing job is going to make me, pain of failing in school is that pain. You know, the pain of losing privilege is going to make me work to earn my privilege back. Work hard. The pain can change you. But there is pain, it will not change you, it just hurts you. Anger only hurts. One other thing also, you should think about the outcome of anger. Those who get angry a lot and angry all the time, diabetes, high blood pressure. Uh, what, uh, uh, you're a doctor, you know more than me. The stress kills you, that's right. And anger just kills you. Uh, what do you call it? Even like your colon, like your, your nerve system, like it just, you know, it, it's unbelievable. Add to this, that's health wise, add to this financial, bad financial decisions, you know, social uh, issues, a lot of disasters in your social life. Uh, so, you know what? For every. Uh, the worst thing, one of the worst thing about anger as well, is losing. You lose a lot. You lose your friends. You lose your, uh, sometimes people forever because you cannot fix this relationship again. You know, I give it to him. Okay, well then you got fired. What the penalty? What did you get? If nothing really, you you know get divorced. It, it just if you think about it wisely. There's, it, there's no good outcome of that anger. It's the wrong type of anger. Um, also, you waste your, you know, it ruins your good time. For every minute you remain angry, you give up 60 seconds of peace of mind. Simple as that. Also, يقولون العرب من أطاع الغضب أطاع الأرب. طيب. يعني أضاع الحكمة وأضاع الشيء المفيد له وكذا. So think before you speak when you're angry. Speak when you're angry and you will make the best speech you will ever regret in your life. I can guarantee you. You know? I can guarantee you another one. Angry is the worst bodyguard is the worst, will never protect you, actually will harm you. There is a, a, a father and a mother kill their children. I know of a case in Saudi Arabia, a father who went to the, to the court. He got so angry at his son, so angry, that he tied his son's hand and he threw him in the uh, like in his room or lock him up and they forgot about him guess what the kid's hand turned blue they had to cut off the hands because his hand he ruined the couch new couch they get some stupid things like that and they had to cut off the both hands of the kid tell me what this father will do for the rest of his life that's a true story by the way 
Can you imagine if this father has son telling him, Dad, I would never touch this couch again. Just give me my hands back. That moment of anger when he tied it, he wasn't thinking. Moment of anger, he punched him and he killed him. Moment of anger, he pulled the gun and he shot someone. Anger is not strength, it's weakness. Qalil Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ash-Shadid, the strong one, the one who controls his anger. Huwa al-lidhi yasra'in, huwa al-sura'i, yani al-shadid al-sura'i, al-lidhi yasra'i al-nas, yani al-qawi. That's why al-Arab used to say, wisdom is not in the time of calmness. Taqul al-Arab, al-ahlam, yani al-uqul, laysat fi hal al-rida, bal fi hal al-ghadab. It's, it's in the time of when someone make you angry. When you calm down, you control, that's what wisdom. One man came to Al-Ahnaf ibn Qais and he told him, told him, that's a, so Al-Ahnaf looked at him, he said, إِذَا قُلْتَ كَلِمَةَ رَدَّتُ عَلَيْكَ بِأَلْفِ If you say one word, I will say a thousand in return. Then Al-Ahnaf is and he said, and if you say a thousand, you will not hear a word from me. قَالْ وَلَوْ قُلْتَ أَنْتَ أَلْفِ مَا سَمِعْتَ مِنِّي وَاحِدًا I control it, don't worry. Uh, you get angry, one of the tips, number 10, maybe it's good to take time out. Time outs aren't just for kids. Give yourself a short break during the day that tend to be stressful. A few moments of quiet time, pray to Rakai, walk to the masjid, Go to exercise, you know, just, just stay away from, take, take time out. One other thing also, there's a nice way is to have things that remind you when you're angry. Maybe a key word. When you get angry. There is, Al-Mu'tabr al-Saman, he said, كَانَ رَجْلٌ مِمَّنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ A man from the nation before you. He gets angry, and he gets angry very, his anger is severe. So he wrote three notes, and he gave, gave each note to one of his friends. He said to the first one, if you see me angry, give me this note. He said the second, if you see me get the note, and I did not calm down, give me the second one. And he said to the third one, if you see the student work, I'm still angry, give me the third one. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, 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 no, I, I mixed up between two stories. The story of al Mu'tawar Sallallahu he said, the, the man, he said, if you see me angry, give me this note. And when you see me come down, the second man, give me this note. When I'm coming down, coming down, just give me the note. And when you see me come back to normal, give me the third note. So he was asked, what are in these three notes? He said, the first one says, أقصر فما أنت وهذا الغضب إنك لست بإله إنما أنت بشر يوشك أن يأكل بعضك بعضا Calm down, you're not God This anger is only eating you from inside And the second one when I'm coming down In it written إرحم من في الأرض يرحمك من في السماء Be merciful with the people on earth Allah will be merciful with you. And the third one, إِحْمِلْ عِبَادَ اللَّهِ عَلَى كِتَابَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يُصْلِحُهُمْ إِلَّا ذَلِكَ Guide people to the book of Allah, nothing will guide people except us. You know, don't let people anger you. Have a, a, a way to remind yourself. Yani, for example, somebody get angry quickly. So what did this person did? He wrote a, letter, a, a note, he said to himself, who anger you, conquer you. So anytime you go to so like deal with people online and stuff like that, he remember, he, I'm not gonna let him conquer me. Another person said, لا تغضب ولك الجنة. Don't be angry and al Jannah is your reward. The hadith. He kept it in his wallet, he just looked at it. Another person has a, he said, another person has a favor perfume. Somebody said that. 
and I know of that uh, person, has his favorite perfume, he loves perfume. So every time he gets angry, they mention the name of the perfume that he likes. And it became between him and his wife. His wife will say, hey, you know, Tom Ford, <laughs> Rude, or you know, <laughs> Dolce Garbana, you know, or whatever he did, his, his favorite uh, perfume, and it calms him down. Get some exercise. Physical activity can help reduce stress, and that can cause you to become angry. If you feel your anger escalating, go for a, you know, a bike, a brisk bike, or run. Spend some time doing other enjoyable physical activities. Maybe you go fishing, maybe you go skydiving, whatever, <laughs> take your anger away. Talk to Ahmed Zalakhir, he will give you some martial art, you know, <laughs> go do some martial art, go have a sandbag, go just, you know, boxing, whatever. Adua, another thing which is adua. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot for it. Ata ibn al-Sa'ib said that his father said, Ammar ibn Yasir led the salah one time. But his salah was very short. Then people said, Khaffafta wa awjist, why your salah is so short like that? Ya Ammar. Then he said, it doesn't matter if it's short or not. Because in my salah, I made a dua that I heard, I, I said a dua that I heard from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And because of this, I don't care. After saying this dua, I don't care about anything else. I said this, that's enough for me. The salah is for me perfect, just because of this dua. So, Alhamdulillah, I said this dua, I don't, I don't need to make my salah long after saying this dua. And he left. So a man followed him when he left the masjid. He said to him, uh, uh, can you tell me what dua is this? Like he, he didn't tell us. He just said, I made this dua in my salah and for me that's enough. I don't care if I missed long qira'a or mini tasbih, it's enough for me. Can you tell me what the dua? Then he said, Allahumma bi'ilmika al-ghayb wa qudratika ala al-khalq ahini ma alimta al-hayata khayran li. Ya Allah, I ask you by your knowledge, the knowledge of the unseen, your ability to create everything that to make me, to give me life, as long as life is good for me. And to take my soul, if death is better for me. Ya Rabbi, as'aluka khashyataka fil ghaybi wa shahada. To fear you in public and in secret. Wa as'aluka kalimat al haqqi fil ghadabi wa rida. That I will say what is true in a moment of anger and a moment of you know, calmness. And I ask you to be balanced when I'm rich or poor. I ask you an, an, a reward and enjoyment that will never come to an end. And something, to the cool of my eyes, that it will never ever finish or vanish. I ask you a rida بعد القضاء يا رب I ask you طبعا the thing that grant him what something the cool of his eyes and something an enjoyment that will never end is Jannah okay and then he said a rida بعد القضاء that I will be always be happy with whatever you decree upon me وبرد العيش بعد الموت that the best life for me will be after death وأسألك and I ask you the, the joy of looking at your face and the, you know, the, the, the shawq, يعني the yearning, that's the, the word, uh, huh? Yearning to meet you. من غير ضراء مضرة ولا فتنة مضلة without any fitna, without any, uh, يعني without being, uh, being, be uh, me crossing the line or doing things that it can harm me. Zayinna bizinat al iman. Beautify us with faith. Wajalna hudat al muhtadin. Make us guided and make us be also guide people. That's the dua that he said. What a beautiful dua. That's why he said, I don't care after that. You can live your life angry, better, better made uh, at 
somebody or even guilty, mad at somebody or even guilty, not letting go of your own mistakes, but you wouldn't receive the good thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in his store for you. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have for you. Allah give it to this one when people come down, when people control their anger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them tremendously. I remember reading a story, I'll end with this story. A wise man was walking with his students by the river and he saw a group of people fighting and angry and their voices are loud, okay? So he asked his students, you know why people when they are angry they shout, they raise their voice? They said, maybe this, maybe that. No, 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 no. They came up with several things. He said, no, no. They don't control it. They don't feel about it. They think that they're not hurt. No. Then he, he want to make a point. He said, because when you became angry at someone, you raise your voice because of the distance between you and that person. The moment you're angry at a person, you feel like very apart from each other, far away from each other, and you raise your voice. Then he said, didn't you see lovers, they whisper at each other's ears, and they talk softly to each other because their hearts are so close to one another. In other words, he was trying to tell them that anger, it just basically made us apart from each other, distanced us from one another. Um, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to yani, uh, help us to control our anger because it's such a hard uh, uh, mission sometimes and make us always be do the, what is right in the moment of anger, in the moment of calmness, to say what's correct and to forgive whatever we say or we do uh, yani, uh, which is wrong. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim. Okay, now we'll see um, if anybody has a comment or uh, questions. Otherwise, we'll call it for tonight. Mark. You got my shed for a very important reminder. Um, this is also uh, something that's um, difficult for me as well. And uh, and I have used some of these techniques. Uh, nowadays, uh, I work a fair amount of night shifts. After night shift, I don't talk to anybody. I go straight done. When I finish my night shift, I go and sleep. And then I found uh, a lot of times I got myself in trouble was after night shift. Um, good advice. Good, good, good tip. My, <laughs> other thing with my kids now is that I don't argue with them anymore. I just take away their, their favorite device. You know what I do, or my wife do? She just cut the internet, the Wi-Fi. <laughs> you know, yeah. we have it in the phone. We just cut the Wi-Fi, especially when we want to call people for dinner and they don't come down, just turn off the Wi-Fi, and all of a sudden, all of them <laughs> come into your room. <laughs> anyway, but uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, you know, it just, it just hard, it, 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 it's hard, you know, it's not an easy, but I think that as long as we admit, as long as we try hard, we'll, we'll, we'll overcome that. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, let's mobilize a way of, you know, this is probably one of the things that I need to work on the most. And sometimes you get put in trials in ways that you learn. You learn. <laughs> so, yep. I Absolutely. Everybody else learns without having to get the trials. Like I've had, so. Yeah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You know, uh, some people can be in your life <laughs> blessings, and some people can be lessons. Well, yeah. I think one of the good points he said, just don't talk when you're angry. That's very good. Uh, 
There is one thing about anger also. There is a good anger, which is, here the word ghadab in Arabic, angry may be a lot of negative connotation to it in English. بس الغضب لله مطلوب والغضب عند بس الغضب المقصود به هنا الغضب الذي ليس فيه تجاوز للحد. The anger, it means that your heart hates to see something wrong, injustice. That anger in your heart, and when you see haram done, wrong things done to people, that anger inside you, it has to be channeled. It's in reverse, it's to be controlled, so in, in the right way, also to be channeled in the right direction, which is something that it will anger, the pain that it will make you change and, and help you. That's why sometimes when I see anger is not for itself, the anger that was praised in Islam, which is the anger for the sake of Allah. Shafi'i Mithan qal, man istughdibu lam yaghdab fahu himar. The person who sees things that make you anger and you're not angry, he said, you're an animal. You know, like animal. He meant to Shafi'i rahimahullah, yani somebody will see injustice and haram happen and he is okay. Yaqi, you get boiled when I see these videos of people abused in the street by an officer. Somebody in his house, one walk inside Hazam and shoot him. Somebody like, you know, innocent person or nations like what you see in our brothers in Palestine or something where you see in, 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 in Russia or uh, sorry, in, in China or in Iraq or, or many areas. Or angry when you see the situation in Yemen. Angry when you see this all. Angry when you see the haram and the shirk and the kufr done. So these all things make you, but that anger is that feeling inside that you hate that. This is wrong. This is not correct. But that anger should turn to be anger when somebody insult the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But that anger should not be not out of control that make me ins- abuse or uh, 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 do things which is not allowed. Uh, or it became the end. Like sometimes I feel just shouting and screaming and so much anger. But that's about it. It, it, it never channel. You should use this force that's forced to channel it to something that will produce something good. And, and I think that, that's important also to be mentioned as we talk about the concept of anger. And I think sometimes it is fair and it is correct to allow yourself to be angry, but don't allow yourself to let this anger translate to actions that it can, action that is wrong or harmful. When you come down, you make the actions, you take the decisions. Anyway, um, thank you very much. Inshallah, hopefully to see you next week. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.